Hey, this one's for Rebecca. I'm going to do some nerdy Excel stuff and dynamically generate numbers and then ultimately serial. All right, synthetic data. This is a new term that's come out with all the chat GPT and all this other fun stuff. Uh, when I first heard about it, uh, all they're doing is they're creating data to meet their needs. So this is, is being done by a quote unquote AI at this point. But uh, I've been doing this for a while in Excel. Uh, and I'm going to show you my method for doing. It's not very hard, but this is uh, just some fun stuff to, uh, to play with. Okay, so I'm going to dynamically generate uh, serial numbers. I'm going to have a 10 character serial number, and this is just kind of, obviously this is a made up scenario, but this is similar to some uh, work that I've done for a number of years. Uh, so I have a table. Uh, and I'm going to use alphanumeric to generate my serial numbers. So I'm going to do A through Z, and I'm going to do 0 through 9, or 1 through 9 plus 0, however you'd like to refer to that. Uh, I'm going to omit a couple of characters. I'm going to get rid of I. I'm going to get rid of O because of their similarity to 1 and 0. Uh, so total, it gives me a, uh, 33 characters, and I've put them in a table here that I'm going to use to look up. And so I'm going to dynamically generate a value between 1 and 33, and it's going to look up these characters. Uh, so the function is ran between and 1, comma, 33. Pretty easy. And that is 10 characters. Or, or 10 instances of that random between. And so it's returning, you can see 2 and it got all the way up to 33, and this is going to be great. So what it's going to do is it's going to look up that value in, in column B in my table, uh, and then it's going to return this, the character in the next uh, column. So I'm going to use VLOOKUP, and there are other ways to do this. This is just one of my fun ways to do it. Uh, I've been doing it long enough, it's just kind of second nature. Uh, so I'm going to select the table or the array. I could name it, but this is going to be a quick and dirty. I don't want to get into naming of the table. And I'm going to hit F4 to make that a concrete reference for the table so it doesn't the, the boundaries don't move. And we're going to look up uh, the second column. And we're going to put in false because we want an exact match. All right, so what this does is it now gives me M. And we get lots of lots of options here. Now the next step is to take this and to concatenate the formula. We're going to combine the formula and then we'll concatenate it multiple times to give me 10 characters. Uh, so what we can do is we've got two different formulas here. Uh, we've got the lookup formula and then we've got the RAND between. So what I'm going to do is insert the RAND between where the B2 reference is. So it was looking at the formula that was in cell B2. So I'm just going to put the RAND between in there. And now uh, I'm going to put an equals at the front so that we get the formula. And now we get an R, and I'll put a copy up here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 10. Okay, so there we have 10 characters. Now the next step would be to uh, put this in series so it would be the same formula over and over and over again uh, and just depending on how nuts you want to make yourself um, I'm just going to move this this way and notice it's recalculating every time I do something you can turn that off by going to File, Options, Formulas, Manual Recalculate. Otherwise, it gets a little aggravating. So we can do this a couple of different ways. I've just moved this so we've got all 10 sets of formulas now in columns. Now if I hit F9, it'll recalculate and gives me a new number. So we can leave it like this, or we can concatenate. There's two ways to concatenate. Concatenate just means to combine, so we can take each, take each one of those cells, and we can combine them. So we can use a formula that is concatenate. And 
you can join this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Oops. That and that and that and that. And when we recalculate, you see that you get a new number. The other way uh, to do this, I'll just highlight all these. I'll grab my right corner, drag it down. Now I've got two sets. The other way is to use the ampersand. So I can click on the first cell. I can do shift seven and then I can click and click and click and click. And they are roughly the same thing. Uh, so if we look, uh, that's just ugly. Um, look, you can see that it's concatenate and then it's F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Z, O uh, with row two, or this is just F, G, H, I, J, K, uh, and this is in row three. It's really the same formula and it gives you the same thing. Uh, so this would give you a 10 character, I can't have to keep checking, I want to make sure, a 10 character serial number. Uh, so you can generate these all day long at this point. So I'll take these two, I'll take this group, and I'll take this cell, which has got the it, uh, all the formulas concatenate. I'm just going to drag it down. They all look the same. And then uh, recalculate. I'll go down. Let's make 50 of these. All right. Now, having these in a dynamic fashion doesn't help you a great deal. Uh, so what you can do is highlight all of these any number of ways. You can click and select multiple cells. Just click and drag down. Uh, you can also do Control, Shift, and the down arrow key, and it will highlight all of the contiguous cells. So if I take and copy that by Control C, and I am going to paste just the values. I'm going to ignore the formulas. And just the values. Where is it? It's right there. Values. Okay, so now those are hard coded. So if I recalculate by hitting F9, you can see that everything else on the screen recalculates except for this column. Uh, and if you're generating hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of serial numbers. Uh, this is a completely random way to do it, but you want to make sure that this is completely random. So we can add, and I can do this to both columns, we can add uh, a conditional formatting, which is right on the home tab for duplicate values. Now the likelihood, and I'm just going to go with the default values, which is going to be a red background with dark red text. Uh, the likelihood of having a duplicate value with this many characters. I'm going to do both columns. Uh, the likelihood is very slim because we've got 33 times 10, uh, however that math works out. So I'm just going to zoom out so we can see that whole column of 50. And I'm going to recalculate. How many was that? Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Okay, so that gives me uh, 500 iterations of that calculation without any duplicates. Well, that's not a true statement. That's 10 iterations of the 50 that don't have any duplicates. So um, once they are copied and pasted as just the values, then you can use these uh, going forward for tests, uh, there are other ways to dynamically generate, or not dynamically, but to generate lists of people. Uh, if you want a first and last name, if you want city, if you want street number, if you want street name, uh, we can do something similar. It won't be based on random numbers in this case. Uh, if you are actually generating serial numbers, most manufacturers have schemas for their serial numbers based on you know the the number of characters that they have and 
the schema is typically readable by somebody who knows. For example, Cisco has three letters that starts, uh, Cisco Networking Systems has three letters that starts the beginning of their uh, serial numbers that tells you the plant that the good was manufactured in. A couple of the digits uh, tell you the year, but it's not a readable calendar year. It doesn't say 2-3 as in year 23. It may say 18. That's a bad one. It may say 35. And it's the 35th year from when they started operations way back in wherever. Uh, and then you have sequential numbers for unit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that may come off of the production line. Other manufacturers have schemas in there as well. They may not be obvious because most people don't need to know that. But if you want your customer to be able to read your serial number, you can obviously go through uh, and develop a schema that makes a little bit more sense, such as if you've got multiple plants, uh, if you've got a particular date, and dates are always a good thing to add, and I'm going to talk about that more in another video. Uh, and then you can do a, a matter of sequence. Uh, we do serial numbers using a date for, um, I'm going to call it software. And the date scheme that we use is the date, actually, we do date. No, it's... It's, uh, it's a skew, and I'm just going to make up a skew. It's 210 AKYW, and then the date, uh, and then the quantity in up to 999. No, 1,000. 9, 9,999. Uh, and so we generate serial numbers when we're purchasing a thing uh, in this manner that typically don't have a serial number. And this tells us everything that we need to know. It tells us the product number or the SKU. It tells us the date that it was purchased and the quantity that was purchased. So the likelihood of buying that SKU on a particular date with the same quantity is not really going to happen. And out of the three years that we've been generating this data, we haven't seen any duplications. Uh, there are multiple uh, groups within the organization that may buy the same SKU, uh, but on the same day and at the same quantity are very unlikely. So it, it works out for us. And so there are, I mean, that seems like a very long serial number, but this is just going into a database. And then the people who need to read it can read it and look at it and decipher it and say that it's a SKU, a date, and a quantity. Uh, and we even put a D in there for date and a Q for quantity to kind of guide you going forward with this. So uh, this is just step one. Uh, there will be a follow-up uh, video for one of my neat tricks for looking information up in here. And enjoy. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.